Good evening and welcome to Heron Project Live. Heron Project is a national nonprofit that provides free resources and support for treatment, recovery, and prevention of substance, of substance use disorder. And as you can see, we are not Kevin Michalasek, who is the executive director of the Heron Project. Jan Osborne and I are going to co-host tonight as a special treat for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we may not have the same accent as Kevin, but we will try. I'm Jan Osborne, and this is Robin Bagwell, and we're host of Reading in Recovery. What Reading in Recovery is we decided to put together a monthly live book club that would be focused on recovery with a little dose of laughter. And so we want to discuss all types of recovery and learn from our followers. And so we're really excited to get to fill in for Kevin tonight and have a great program planned for you. Yes, and um, it's a perfect timing for this program since Mother's Day is Sunday, for those of you who may have forgotten. We are gonna talk to an organization that takes women with their children into recovery. And um, it's the Nexus Recovery Center, and Nexus has been around for 50 years. It's a Dallas organization. It's helped thousands of people overcome substance and alcohol abuse in order to lead a healthy, productive, and rewarding life. And Nexus is committed to um, helping families. They provide a wide range of services. You're going to hear from their executive director, um, their CEO, Heather, in a minute. But... They um, have specialized services that include treatment for adult women, adolescent girls, and um, they're accompanied with their children. So I'm going to introduce Heather. She has quite an impressive resume. And you know what? There is one other thing. She's from Bentonville, Arkansas, <laughs> and I'm from Bentonville, Arkansas. <laughs> so just thought I would make that little connection. But let me tell you a little bit about Heather. Heather joined Nexus in 2020. Prior to that, she worked for Dallas Children's Advocacy Center, where she most recently served as the Chief Operations Officer. Heather joined DCAC in 2013 and oversaw finance, information services, human resources, education, and the Crimes Against Children Conference. She's a certified public accountant. <laughs> can you do that, Robin? <laughs> yeah, I can. And a CPA in the state of Texas. And prior to joining DCAC, she had over 12 years of experience in public accounting. She was a director with Price Waterhouse Coopers LLP and specialized in providing assurance and business advisory services for Fortune 500 companies. Her clients were primarily SEC registered pharmaceutical and life sciences companies, as well as several non-public hedge funds and private equity partnerships. Heather holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration with a double concentration in accounting and marketing from the University of Richmond. So welcome, Heather. And um, we're so excited to have you on our Mother's Day special. And I know um, as a mother, your recovery is incredibly important to you as mine is to me and we'd like you to just share a little bit about your story great thank you both for having me on tonight and thank you for just the work you do in the community and talking about recovery and especially women in recovery because it's so important that people see that um you're bright shining examples for others and so just the joy and happiness that you exude means so much um, I grew up in Bentonville, as Jan mentioned, and had a very blessed childhood. And, you know, I come from a family with resources and did well in school. And, you know, mom and dad are still married after 45 years. And so on the outside, everything was perfect. I made straight A's, was a cheerleader, had all the outside external things. Um, but I'm also a biracial. My dad's from Pakistan and my mom is Caucasian. And so I didn't realize, couldn't put words to it then, but I just always felt out of place. And um, so I started drinking alcoholically very young at the age of 14. 
Um, and I can remember my first drink just kind of quieted all of the, am I fitting in and am I doing it right? Are people noticing that I shouldn't be here? Because I just always felt like I shouldn't be wherever I was. Um, and drinking quieted that for a while and it worked until it didn't work anymore. And I know that, you know, those in recovery know what that means is it's alcohol and drugs can be our best friend until they turn on us and it's just miserable. And I remember clearly waking up in, it was Christmas morning and I was at my parents in Arkansas and it was three in the afternoon on Christmas morning and I was 28 years old and I've always wanted to be a mother and I just had that realization of my god this is so depressing I can never have a family if this is how I'm going to live waking up at three o'clock on Christmas day and just thinking of how would I do Santa Claus or any of those things I want to tell you that uh, um three o'clock isn't Christmas morning (laughs) (laughs) so unless yes unless you're an alcoholic right and so I just remember thinking like I've got to do something different or I'm never going to be able to have a family I mean and at that point I was undateable and even hangoutable it it was just it was so sad and um I went back to New York which is where I lived at the time and started seeing a therapist and told her all the things I was unhappy about and that, you know, I know I have to change my life and I'll do anything. I meant I'll take anything that you prescribe, but I said I'll do anything. And so she sent me to an AA meeting and for some reason my ears and heart were open and I looked around the room and that's how I got sober was through um, a 12-step program. And for me, that was AA. And so it was just listening to everybody talk and relating to everything they said again they put words to things I was feeling um, and I so often think that people that aren't in recovery don't realize this is a feelings disease um, for so many of us that we drank or used drugs to mask the feelings that we didn't want to feel anymore um, and so that's how I got sober and I stayed in the program for three and a half almost four years and so by that time I was getting I was just 30 um, which now I laugh. I'm like, that's so young. And I was like, well, where are my cash and prizes? You were cured. You were yeah. cured. That's right. You were well. I had done the uh-huh. work. I mean, I had done the steps. I was going to meetings. I had a sponsor. So where are my cash and prizes? Where's the husband? Where's the kids? Where's the house? Yeah. And I've done all the steps. Yes. That's so right. I just thought they would magically appear. And um, I remember my parents that were not in recovery asking me, like, when do you graduate? When Do you, do you have to go to these meetings forever? And I said, I, I don't know, I guess. And um, clearly got disconnected from the program and so I relapsed and um, it was painful yeah. even more so than the first time because I knew I was going to have to go mm-hmm. back in like I knew I was going to have to get sober again or I would die so it um, wasn't e- it wasn't an easy journey no. you get sidetracked and then you have to get right back on that road to sobriety yes and, and there's no shame in walking back through those doors again. I mean, I, I, I know people that have come in and they're just immediately embraced, like, we're so glad you're back. It that is happens. literally one of the most welcoming and supportive communities that I've ever witnessed. And that's why it was so important for me to go to Nexus mm-hmm. when I did. I became the CEO during the pandemic mm-hmm. and, you know, not an ideal time to take over a leadership role. Okay. So can you tell us how... How you arrived at Nexus. Yes. I mean, so, during the pandemic, just tell us how you even found out about Nexus and how you ended up being the CEO. So, so I almost fell asleep when you were reading my resume because I'm like, oh my God, like I've got to take all that accounting stuff out of there. But I knew that that wasn't the path that I was meant to be on when I was in public accounting, not because it's not a worthwhile career. Or it's, you know, it's got its perks. I got to travel a lot. But it just wasn't mission focused. And so I really had this desire to work um, to give back to people and to give back to others in the way that I'd been so freely given to through recovery. And so fast, fa- fast forward, I got sober for hopefully the final time on January 11th, 2011. So I just celebrated 10 years not too long ago. Thank you. Um, and when I finally gave up and stopped expecting the cash and prizes, um, I met my now husband at a bar. Hi, Jason. Um, I think most people know the story that know as well, but his opening lines to me were, 
who orders coffee in a bar? What are you, an alcoholic? Why, yes, I am. <laughs> um, and so we've been married for almost six years now, and we have a four-year-old and a two-year-old. And so, again, not the ideal time when you have two toddlers at home yeah. to take an executive director right. position. Yes. But the former CEO of Nexus um, was retiring, and I found out about her retirement and talked to my husband about it and said, I know this is the worst time for me to do this other than when I was pregnant. That probably yes. would have been the only other time. But during a pandemic, um, having no background in a residential treatment facility, um, but hey, why not? And so I applied and they had done a national search and um, it was God's timing, not mine. Well, you had mentioned you had resources, you mm -hmm. had, you know, supportive parents that were still married, you had, you know, connections, and it was still so hard. And to come into Nexus and see these mothers that, you know, maybe it's, you can go to jail or you can go to Nexus, mm -hmm. and they're just there to avoid so jail. So could you, since Robin's talking a little Sorry. bit about it, <laughs> no, no, we, need to, we need to go on and will you explain to people who do not know yes. what Nexus is and what they do, because Robin is very familiar with it, but people watching might not know exactly. Yes, and so Nexus is a residential and outpatient treatment facility in Dallas that is celebrating our 50th year this year. And we provide services for women only and women with children. And why that is so unique is because recovery and substance use disorder recovery especially requires a tremendous amount of vulnerability and honesty. And so to do that with only other women surrounding you is really, really important. And during the pandemic, especially, that's just what I kept thinking about was, my God, there are no 12-step programs happening in person right now back in June. And I thought about all the people that were in the rooms of recovery when I walked in that looked me in the eye and held my hand and said, you can do this. You never have to feel like this again. You're not alone. And so my heart broke for people reaching out, trying to get help during COVID sure. because where do you go? Um, so Nexus never closed its doors. And, and what pandemic. about the children aspect? I mean, so, share about yes. what's unique about Nexus. Um, and you rightfully pointed out, Robin, I had resources available to me. So I mm -hmm. had private insurance. I could go to a therapist and to a psychiatrist. The women that we serve are primarily homeless or below the poverty level. So they have nowhere else to go in terms of treatment or medical services. And, and, so and we I know provide sometimes that. even um, it's it's people that had had that and have been to several mm -hmm. treatment centers and their family's done. They're like, you're on your own now. And they've it's, exhausted. it's the last stop yes. on the trail. Yes. They've exhausted all those resources. So really what we try to do is remove all the barriers that exist for women to get into treatment. And one of those barriers is the financial ability. And the other is, what do I do with my kids? So if I have children already, you know, having kids or being pregnant is a great motivator to get sober, but what if I already have them and I don't have a safe place for them mm -hmm. to go? Because again, one in four of the women that we serve are homeless when they're admitted. So we allow them to bring up to three children into treatment with them. So that's another barrier removed um, so that they come and they live with them on campus. And we have a fully licensed daycare and the kids also receive tremendous trauma-informed services while they're there and our women with children are usually there for 90 days with adult women without children are usually there for 30 because it's just a deeper more holistic model with the women with children and we focus on and parenting so what are, what are, oh, um, i'm sorry but. so what about if you have a woman who's pregnant they don't have any children but they're pregnant and they realize they need recovery can you tell us how Nexus can help them? Yes, and so we are one of the only service providers that will accept women at any stage of pregnancy. So from the very first week up until the 40th. So we have women that will admit into services. They're 40 weeks pregnant. They go to Parkland, which is the public hospital here in Dallas, deliver and they come back. So we have literally three day old babies on campus with us and we never ever ever want to turn a pregnant woman away because the sooner a pregnant woman gets into services even if it's in the third trimester the sooner she gets in the birth outcomes of those babies dramatically improve so birth weight they stay um, in utero longer so you know get closer to that due date 
and mom can be on medicated assisted treatment or um, whatever substances she's on. It's primarily opioid users is what I'm thinking about. But we provide services to make sure that mom is getting healthy and also that that baby's going to be healthy as well. Well, you had mentioned um, that you had preschool on campus. What yes. if the children are elementary school or, or middle school, you know, older kids? What do they do for school? So we've learned so much during the pandemic. And actually, this was a little easier for us this year because we were able to do virtual learning on campus. So we serve women from anywhere in the U.S., but primarily from the state of Texas. A lot of people think that we only serve women in Dallas-Fort Worth, but we have clients from all over the state. So if the kiddo was already enrolled in a school system, um, they could do virtual learning on campus. And so, you know, we stopped having visitors on campus and having people leave campus during the pandemic. So those kids were able to stay enrolled in school and participate virtually um, in non-pandemic times, although I haven't been there yet. Um, <laughs> we enroll those kiddos in the Dallas Independent School District um, elementary school and middle schools that are closest to campus, and we take them there and then pick them up after school. And the reason we provide those services is so mom can be completely focused on her recovery and treatment during the day and know that the kid is well taken care of and loved on campus and right there close to her. What about if one of the children needs counseling? Do you have counseling for the kids to help them through this time? We do. And so um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the ACEs study, but it's adverse childhood experiences. And there's a whole bunch of questions. And this was a study out of Kaiser Permanente that a lot of people are familiar with. But if a child has an ACE score of seven or higher, it actually means that their life expectancy is decreased by 20 years. Oh, wow. So the, th the questions on this are like, has your parent been incarcerated? Do they have substance abuse disorder? Um, are you homeless? Are, are there mental health disorders in the household? Is there domestic violence? It's just like, yes, 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 yes. So when the kids that are coming to our campus are coming there, we know that their ACE scores are high. And so we do provide trauma-informed therapy as well. Also, if mom was using while she was pregnant and the baby was in utero, they may have developmental or physical delays. So we do speech therapy, occupational therapy, and um, phys physical therapy, occupational, and yes, those three, um, as well as trauma-informed play therapy. So you're not just helping the woman, you're helping no. the whole family. I love and that. Yes. So, breaking the cycle. Mm -hmm. I believe it's prevention work that is so meaningful because those kids not only get to see mom be resilient and rebuild her life, but then they learn a different and better way as well. Well, um, what happens, I know you get some government funding. Mm -hmm. What happens, like, say they pay for 30 days. I know it's. I know mm -hmm. there's always a need greater than what they're willing to pay. Yes. How do you um, cover that gap? So y'all should call this myth busters instead of <laughs> reading and recovery because you're busting all the myths about Nexus. <laughs> um, that is something that people think is that we're 100% publicly funded and the public funding doesn't cover our cost. Um, the reimbursement rates, like you said, they're covered for a certain number of days or it's just like private insurance where the government will pay for a certain number of days. But a lot of our families, especially over the past year, don't have a place to go yet or need an extended uh, treatment plan. And so we, through our private funds, we have the flexibility to keep clients longer, but also our private fundraising is what helps us invest in our staff and invest in our facility. Um, our staff work so hard. We do know that. Um, we have seen them in action. It's not an easy job, and, and so many of them are alumni that have graduated from our programs and are in recovery themselves. And again, they want to give back the same way I do. And so we have to invest in them. And so any private funding that we get goes towards our staff, towards the facility, and to kind of fill that gap um, for client so services. Those, those watching that may want to donate to Nexus, mm -hmm. I know y'all have a 50 for 50 campaign coming up, but you know, I know every little bit helps. Yes. Whether you think, oh, I just have $100 to give, that's not going to matter. I mean, you know, that can buy so many diapers or so much formula. And um, how can they people donate that are watching that? Mm -hmm. Oh my Want goodness. to support mothers. Yes, yes. $100 is fantastic. And we can tell you about the mission and 
it's just any donations are so appreciated. And um, people can go to our website, which is Nexus Recovery. Dot org um, and learn more about us and not only dollar donations but volunteer opportunities um, we have groups that bring 12-step meetings to campus we've created virtual volunteer opportunities this year there are so many drives that people can do yes. like Robin mentioned we always need diapers and formula and bottles and everything is purchasable on Amazon these days. So, yes. um, and you can send it right, right there too. You can yes. order on, you know, Amazon and send it directly to Nexus mm -hmm. underwear for the ladies, leggings. Yes. Well, one of the things that Robin and I have done over the years, we've had so much fun is we've done a lot of our volunteering out there. So mm -hmm. we've done Christmas parties, Valentine's parties, Halloween parties. Yeah. And it's, you know, we think that we're doing this to help the kids, but the bottom line is, they just love it's, it, yeah. It's doing it for us. Yeah. We always leave there, and we feel so fulfilled after getting to be with the staff and all. You're doing an amazing work. Amazing. Amazing and work. So many people with long-term sobriety are the result of Nexus and the donations that come in, and there's no better way to spend your money than giving a kid their mother back. I mean, that was Absolutely. the greatest gift I had as a adult child is having my dad get sober so yeah. it's just fabulous yes. yeah and i get to do it every day like it's just the best job ever it's good. amazing i have a well, question from the audience oh, good okay uh, i actually have a couple heather what would you say is your favorite thing working at nexus so far it's definitely the staff um and just that feeling of gratitude you get when you walk in the door um, so many people grateful that want to give back to others and help the women that are there and how just grounded they are and people don't ask for anything it's there's no air of entitlement and so the staff that want to be there and help the clients genuinely in their heart just want to give back is the best thing about working there I think we have only time for one more question because we talk so much. So <laughs> give us another question. One and more. Uh, so Risa on Facebook asks, uh, what do you suggest for women who are pregnant? So if there was a pregnant woman in here right now facing down substance use disorder, what would you say to her? So again, you never have to feel this way again. And it doesn't matter if you've been using while you're pregnant, you can get help now. Um, you can reach out to Nexus or any substance use disorder treatment facility that's close to you and you can get help immediately. It's never too late. Like I said, we have women admit in their third trimester and just as soon as you get in, you never have to feel like this and your baby will be so much better off. Great. Wait, real quick before we log off, can she share about the Mother's Day event they have this weekend? Oh, please. Give a quick so plug. We, our auxiliary is a lovely group of volunteers that has been with us for 25 years, is hosting a floral pop-up shop where you can go online, again, to nexusrecovery.org and order a Mother's Day bouquet for your mom, and you can come pick it up at Nexus on Saturday, right. and they're going to be made by the volunteers and clients, so we're so excited. That is fantastic. Well, Heather... You are an amazing, you're an amazing young woman and Nexus is so lucky to have yes. you. And I'm saying Dallas is very lucky to have it's you. So lucky. And um, I think it's safe to say, Kevin, your job is secure. You have nothing to worry about <laughs> us taking over yes. long term. You know, it's really funny because Robin, when we first met Chris, when Chris Heron first did an event for us and would you have ever thought we might be hosting a program that he was involved I'm with? I'm shocked that he's letting us. He probably doesn't know. I don't think he, he knows. Know. I think if he knew we were hosting this, he would be, you yeah, know, a little worried. something. But, Kevin, we appreciate the opportunity to fill in for you and call us anytime. And be sure and follow us at Reading and Recovery. You can and, find us yes. on at readingandrecovery.org. And be sure and follow Nexus. NexusRecovery.org. And of course, follow the Heron Project. Thanks. Great. Have a great week and a happy Mother's Day. Thank, Thank you, Heather. You. Thanks, Thank all. You.